Hey guys, you ever wondered why people use spears historically and why it's just so many depictions of them found their way or how formations seem to have come up with them? Well, since the dawn of time, we've been using spears as a method to try and find game, fight each other, and protect ourselves from everything except for the elements, because unfortunately, you can't stab a hurricane. Well, even since the Bronze Era, civilization has been trying to use the spear in a manner that they can really just better the length between themselves and another opponent. Simply put, if you can put more distance between yourself and the other person you're trying to stab, then you find that the spear is the most optimal object. We have everything from the short spear, which was used more of a throwing weapon, kind of like the pilum for the Romans, all the way to, like, the pike that's used in the pike and shot era to keep horsemen away from you while you're trying to aim that gun that takes forever to reload. It's important to note that in today's culture, spears don't really find their way into a lot of things, like you might see a couple examples of guards using pole arms as a method of defending themselves from major things, but really the biggest example I could find is like Chinese man catchers, which kind of use the same emphasis on a spear but in a non-lethal way to capture somebody. Spears really are the first pole arm. They are something that became very instrumental throughout history because it combines the least amount of work with the most amount of the effectivity. If you think about why we moved over to guns, it's because it takes a lot less work and time to train someone to go bang and shoot someone from a small distance or a large distance. However, for the items like a bow and arrow, that takes a long time. That takes potential years of practice. Spears were kind of the firearm of the melee weapon world, where it took a long time to train someone how to properly use, say, an axe in formation or or a sword, which really historically wouldn't happen all that often, or hammers, or any kind of weapon that requires a little bit of strategy behind it, you have an item that you literally just say, hey, line up in and poke each other with it. And that is the emphasis of where the spear comes from and why it became so fundamentally important to us as a species. Like cavemen, they wouldn't have been fighting in these large formational fighting rings where it's like, you know, big lines of people. It would have been small skirmish fighting, and so items like axes, hammers, clubs, spears, anything they can get their hands on that can do that quick work and save the energy, that is where we come from. Now, as you get into things like the Bronze Era, you have groups like the Greeks, you have the Babylonians, you have the Egyptians, and each of these use spears in their own way. A lot of armies will prefer to use ranged warfare when that is available. However, the great part about the spear is, is that it works as just as good of a throwing weapon as it does a main fighting tool. If you train a bunch of soldiers how to use the javelin or the spear and they can throw that item effectively, they have the arm strength to then build up a thrusting motion. And that is how you see the spear evolve itself historically. This weapon goes from something that, okay, hey, we're going to line up and we're going to throw the weapon, or we're going to sit in the trees and wait and throw the weapon, to, hey, this weapon, we can throw a bunch of wooden ones, which is how javelins came to be, and then we'll take our main weapons, our big pointy sharpened spears, and we will go in and finish off the guys that don't have it. It's a pretty grisly thought, but when you're talking about spears, really that is where the starting point. Now, in formational fighting, the idea becomes a little different. It's having that distance away from everything while providing as many pokey bits in a line as possible. You don't, like, most people don't want to run towards a line of pokey bits. And so, this is where things like Pike and Shot, where the Phalanx, where the Roman Turtle Shoot or Formation comes in, that's all where the spear became prevalent. In modern combat, this doesn't really work very well because you have a bunch of people that can hide behind cover, they can get up and fire a bunch of, you know, automatic rounds at you, or God forbid, if you're unlucky, someone can throw a grenade or an airstrike or something bad, terrible, that isn't ground warfare could happen. Whereas back in the day, your largest concern was slingers, catapults of some kind of siege craft, or archers. And archers 
Yeah, armor would progress to try to handle archers, but archers would progress over armor. And I firmly do believe that while well, armor and spears were developed to help in melee, at the end of the day, the king of the battlefield is always going to be whatever ranged weapon. However, the queen of the battlefield, the spear, is a weapon that can be taken into more predicaments and more or less trained people can be trained, can be summoned to use these items. If you go back into feudal times, this is exactly why this spear was such a favorite item until the invention of things like the bill hook. Because you could take a bunch of farmers who are used to bailing hay, working the fields, they've got that nice muscle physique of someone that works in the fields all day, and they can use this weapon in the same motion that you would bail some hay. Stab and take out or stab and fail. And this would be an, a tactic that you would see fundamentally throughout most of the Middle Ages. Despite it being romanticized as this world of knights with swords and horses and everything, the spear, the pike, the javelin, all of these items made it incredibly hard to be a heavily armored individual because no matter how strong and durable your armor is, having a large two to three foot shaft item plunged into your chest is definitely not going to be the thing to Now, as we move forward in history and we look towards the Napoleonic era, the shield, or the spear would take more of a defensive posture. It would be used more like the boar spear in history, which would be used for boar hunting because if you can scam the back of the spear down and wait for the spear or the boar to come in, they're going to collide with the spear trying to get to you. So they would put these little flanged pegs on the side that would stop the beast from simply ripping down the shaft after you. So, in the Napoleonic era, a lot of these spears would adopt these similar strategies except to do with horsemen. Because the best way to make a group of riflemen run away is to have a group of cavalry run down the mountain towards you. And this is why the Hossier is such an important unit in history, because despite these pike and shot errors where you'd have six and nine foot poles with a spear tip in a pike setup, just literally waiting for an opponent to just drive through, and the Hossiers would just go, nope, sorry, we're gonna bust through those lines anyways. But the spear fundamentally proved to be an item that cheap armies could make the most use of, and that armies Enemies could come home safely from. Because when you're trying to engage enemies with, say, an axe and a shield, which is a very common strategy that you would have seen with something like a shield wall, you have a lot of grisly man-on-man -man fighting. Spears provide kind of like a dead zone in trenches. Like you've got, you know, one trench and two trench, and in between there's the area that you don't want to be in. Spears have that similar effect. You've got one line of spears, you've got two lines of spears, and where they interlock you definitely don't want to be because they're going to be stabbing at each other constantly and when you deal with that and when you realize that you really see why the spear became more of a historical weapon that more armies tried to implement across the world because most cultures if not i'm willing to bet every culture has some kind of sharpened object on a stick meant for poking people which could be implemented as a spear We've been doing it since cavemen. We're probably going to bring it back at some point if firearms ever do fail us. Now, the latest example of spears that I can find in actual use is kind of little grisly one, and that is the use of the exploding spear in World War II. And in the Korean conflicts, I've seen that they were used a little bit. And these items were essentially soldiers would, uh, you know, decide that God was worthy of meeting very soon, and would load a lot of explosive items onto a long pole similar to a pike, and would rush the side of a battle tank. And the main intention of this was to essentially destroy the armor of the tank, killing the crew inside, or a mobilizing the tank so that the crew can be captured. This is a very symbolic way, in my opinion, that showcases the 
best attributes of a spear, that a people trying to defend themselves or trying to fight for what they believe is right can take an object that is so simple and they're willing to put that as the shield for their culture against an invading force. And no matter how we choose to look at those things, I believe that is a large reason as to why that object became more prevalent rather than just, you know, rushing it with some kind of alternative source explosive or further in the long, some kind of propelled explosive. Now, funny enough, as missiles and things became more frequent, that's kind of the modern term that we have for spears. We use something to spearhead something, to break through a line. And I think that that also symbolically showcases the best aspects of the spear, as it is an object that breaks through something. It doesn't simply stab at and defend, it breaks through and brings victory. And historically, I think there is no better example of that than the phalanx line, the tortoise formation, and countless other armies that utilize spears to defend their people and to further their victory goals. And the next aspect I'd like to talk about is quite honestly the mythology aspect of the spear. Throughout many cultures, from the spears of Kulain to the spear of destiny, there are items that are depicted as these spears that are capable of great grandiose things and are a representation of power. Even, you know, the in the Bible, the thing that traditionally kills Jesus on the crucifixion is a spear. And it is just telling that even in old representations of the Grim Reaper, not only is he depicted not with a scythe, but as holding a spear and a soldier's helmet, showing the envy of the Crusades and the destruction of those periods. And I think that in mythology, the spear is also able to be tied to things like Zeus's lightning bolt, as that is basically what I can imagine the most natural exploitation of a spear being is the lightning bolt. And thus, it represents that power, that control and royalty that comes from taking what you need in conquest. Because even as in the biblical adaptation it goes, holding a large spear was conquest. So, it, it goes in with what I believe. And of course, all of this is my personal adaptations of mythology. I can't say for certain whether that is or not. That's the fun of it all. In modern times, we see spears in a lot of video games and in a lot of tabletops. You know, it is an object that is defined as kind of a graceful object. People use it for royal standards and, you know, people who are grizzled veterans. They typically will carry them in these fantasy settings. And I think that that all boils down to is there's a strategy of the spear that just can't be undermined. And that is you get a ranged advantage. In D&D, that is the purpose of the spear and what makes it good, is when armed with other polearm featured abilities, it allows you to attack from a greater distance than nearly anything else. That's why the pipe exists. It's a deterrent, it's a weapon, and it's something that historically we are comfortable carrying. When you hold a spear, you kind of know exactly what it's used for, even if you have never carried one in your life. And I think as a reenactor, that's why I recommend the spear so often to people who are so young. And that is the other place that you'll see it a lot, is in these reenactments and things, where the spear is, quite honestly, revered as one of the better weapons if you want to get into pole arms. It's one of the simpler things. Like, in Asianic things, you could say that the bow staff and everything is an easier weapon, it's a lot safer, but the range of motion and the energy expended on using a spear for thrusting and slashing is a lot less than trying to use the consecutive kinetic force of hitting something with a staff to build up that blow. And I think that is why so many cultures historically depended on the spear. It's a great hunting tool, it's a great fishing tool, it's a great weapon of war, and it's a great deterrent of invaders.